Hello, this is Kristen Lee. And I'm Erica Lord. And that is the Mercedes AMG GT 63S. You guys asked us a bunch of questions about it. We got answers, so let's get to it. Cut to the intro graphics. The first question comes from Midlux, who asks, what's the rear seat executive package? Well, I am so happy that you asked. First of all, it's not standard, right? It's an option. Oh, no, no, no. According oh, you've to got the window sticker. The window sticker. Uh, this costs $3,550. All right, so for three and a half thousand dollars. Serious option, What man. are we getting? Okay, 40-40 split folding outer rear seats with fixed center business console. So this doesn't move, nope. and I, these two come down. So I guess if you have luggage, just make sure it's not like splayed. Right, and don't go furniture shopping with this car because it's just not gonna work out. Uh, second, we got heated and cooled rear cup holders. Oh, 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 in here. So it's not just a cup holder; it will cool Madam's drink, or it will <laughs> warm Madam's drink. It's fancy with <laughs> whichever way you want to go. The with smart that. indicator lights. Right, right, Good. right, right. Of course. Three zone climate control. I guess you activate that through with the screen. With the screen, right? Because you have your own vents here. Yep. Just adjust everything to is your that liking. Screen, is that screen extra? The screen is extra. The high resolution touch screen. So, three and a half thousand dollars. It's not worth, and I'll tell you why. I spent half an hour in this car over the weekend looking for the heated rear seat function because, I don't know, sometimes people back here are cold. Right. And I couldn't find it, and I'm pretty sure it doesn't exist. So what you're telling me is you are going to spend $35,500 for your drink Yep. to be warm and your ass not? Mm. It's not worth it. Hell no. Infuriating. Pass. Thank yeah, you. Big Next. old pass. The next question comes from Tapas, who asks, what is the rear seat room like? Do the rear seats have thigh support? Can a tall person sit without being beheaded? That's Ooh. extreme. Yikes. No, what no one's, first this? of all, no one's being beheaded. Right. Because not, um, but a tall person we're going to assume is like maybe like a six foot person, right? Right. And you're five seven. Do I you am. feel you have adequate leg room? I have extremely adequate leg room. I mean, this is like, plenty of space. And that's like where you were sitting in the front seat. Right. And there actually is a hump in here. Yep. Gives you a few extra inches of headroom, which is nice. So I guess like a six foot person would have a little more, uh, need a little more headroom than you and also have more a leg, little more probably. leg. But if you have a little more leg, you can see that it actually is pretty good. Yeah, you can definitely fit adults back here. Now, if there was like a six, six person in here and a six, six person there, probably not. No. But for right now, it's not bad. And oh, last thing, do your thighs feel supported? Oh my gosh, my thighs feel so supported. I mean, I actually feel like this every day. We all, we all need so much support in our lives, so much more support. Oh, these days, support is just hard to come by. <laughs> our next question is from Kindred yet again, which aren't we all, who asks, did the Mercedes PR people give you instructions on how to deploy the rear wing manually while you cruise around 18 miles per hour, AKA douche mode, so you can fit the Model X and Porsche drivers? Signed, Porsche guy whose wing doesn't deploy until 80, LOL. <laughs> well, wow, sad. here's the thing. You can actually deploy this rear wing while the car is standing still. Whoa. There's a button right here. Oh. Oh, there it goes. That sounded kind of ominous. There it is. Rear wing is deployed. That's right. And we're not even moving. Oh my gosh, so much downforce for it to stand still. I know. Unbelievable. The next question comes to us from Hafty, who asks, does this car have entertaining mood settings and muscle training features? Hard pass if no. Those are my two must-haves. Mm. Thank you so much for asking that question. I was so <laughs> hoping someone would ask that question. So yeah. on this big <laughs> ass screen right here, mm -hmm. you can see that there is a home button. If you go to the home button and you go into vehicle, you can go into seats, you got climate control, energizing comfort. What's that, you oh. might ask? Energizing comfort? What are these menu options? Say I wanna feel vitality. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Things that means, oh. oh my God. Do you feel, vi it, like, do you feel vitalized? 
Sort of. So you've got different menu options here. You've got a, uh, I don't know if you can smell the... Oh, I smell something. <laughs> the onboard cologne. And there's uh, your seat fan is on. Oh, it's on cooling. And there's a massage going. That's Vitality. What are the other ones? Let's see. Which one do you want? Training. Oh yes, the workout, the training. I want to train right now. I feel like I haven't. Let's get out. stimulated. Let's get muscle stimulation. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. Ten minutes of muscle activation. Small, subtle movements boost muscle coordination and the health of your back. Okay. Okay. All right, I'm ready. Please pay attention to the traffic. Interrupt the exercise as soon as the traffic situation requires. <laughs> I love that it assumes the that we're driving. Yep. As this is happening. Okay. I look Select like that a human. Posture for all exercises that follow. First Start exercise. With shoulder movements. Ooh. Move your right shoulder far back in circles. Your motion is restricted due to the fact that your hand is on the steering wheel. Not and hers. my Sit giant parka. <laughs> on the steering wheel. Make the movement smaller. Oh. Smaller. Smaller. And smaller. Smaller! The smaller and more smaller. subtle the movement, the greater smaller. the coordination in the muscles as they move. I feel like this is very rude that it now assumes. Move both shoulders together oh, to oh the God. God, that's too much work. Your shoulder blades should almost touch. What? They can't ever. They, they are getting closer. Way. Do not pull them up. Oh. What? Oh. Don't do that. Oh. Oh, so we're just going. Oh, we're just oh. kind of cinching. Oh. Thank you, German lady. I need enjoyment now. Thank God. Okay. You can't see this right now, but the interior lights are yellow, which is the German color for enjoyment. Right. As is this fun jam. So. I really. The car is now a nightclub. I. This is definitely not a nightclub I would go to. This is a nightclub I would go to, and then probably fall asleep in. Right. That's opposite of the point of nightclub. Eh. <laughs> Last question from Andy AMG 55 who says, as a true Mercedes enthusiast, I have just one question. Why? When I grew up, there were three sedans, two coupes, one convertible, and a roadster. In 1999, there were only two AMGs. In 2002, there were three sedans, two coupes convertibles, two roadsters, an SUV, and five AMG total models. Now there are seven sedans, four actual coupes, three convertibles, three roadsters, five SUVs, and two types of AMG per model. Jesus, when does it end? You know, that's actually a sentiment I've been feeling a lot recently, which is why are there so many AMGs? And by extension, what is AMG? I think AMG is, is marketing now. Um, I understand AMG models sell really, really well, and that's great but as kind of also an AMG exclusivity purist, I think there are <laughs> far too many. There's actually another German brand that's been doing that too. Yes, hmm, let me think. Oh, BMW. Everything is an M now, isn't it? M for marketing. M for, okay, yes, more. Please. More, M for more also, yeah. But he's absolutely right. There's like two AMG trims for every SUV, SUV coupe, which is a thing. This is called a four-door coupe, which is objectively wrong. That doesn't make any sense. That being said though, this car is really good. It's a really so good. good AMG because the whole ethos of AMG was to put a huge batshit engine in a, a, a car that had no right or reason to have it. Like you look at this, you're like, oh, it's like a big sedan, right? right. You know, it's Classy got a big trunk. business people. Exactly. But under the hood, you have a 630 horsepower twin turbo V8 engine, which is so much. Oh my God. <laughs> and no one knows it while they look at it. So I think <laughs> that's the AMG way. And yeah, there are too many AMGs. This is the one to have if you're gonna have one. Agreed. Thanks so much for watching. Catch you when it's a lot warmer out. Yes. <laughs> Still driving. Your shoulders diagonally to the back and downward. <laughs> what? what? Your rib cage gets wider. What is that? You I have more space don't to understand breathe. what she's asking. <laughs> <laughs> your stomach is tensed slightly and holds your pelvis back. This is so uncomfortable. Release I'm gonna poop. And start again. <laughs> <laughs>